Hello, Libra. Thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for November. The great news is that Mars, the planet of punch, of drive, of penetration when it comes to our desires, is definitely to the fore all through this month as it transits through your sign. This is going to give you a great deal of self-possession and determination to achieve your personal goals. Now, Mars is joined by your ruler for the first week of this month, Venus. So your sex appeal and the energy that you're going to be transmitting in the first week of the month can be absolutely sensational. Also, the Sun and Mercury are in your second solar house, in the passionate sign of Scorpio. When it comes to transformation, Scorpio really is the sign. And of course, Jupiter, the planet of growth, moved into Scorpio last month. But in the first week of this month, the Sun is form forging an angle with Neptune. Neptune is the planet of dreams, of illusions, of spirituality, of compassion. And for you, it has been in an area which may have posed some issues since 2012, insofar as around sacrifices. Now, if you're someone who has good boundaries, you may have been able to balance what you're giving to other people and what you're needing to get back. But certainly in the first week of this month, it's an opportunity for you to be very much looking out for those who are less fortunate. If you are in a work or have a job or in a sector which is about helping or healing people, you can do particularly well in the first week of this month. It could even feed into your financial situation in a very positive way. It is true that there is a full moon on the 4th, and that full moon is in the sign of Taurus, which is more about your long-term resources and very close alliances. But I think if you're in a situation where you feel that your give is at least appreciated, if not reciprocated exactly in kind, then that's something that will feel very positive for you. If you do end up doing any kind of good deed, whether it's a charitable activity or just looking out for someone who's going through a tough time, it can feel good for them, but also good for you. Now, on the 6th of this month, Mercury moves into Sagittarius, which is, for you, the sector of thinking and words and everyday communications, and your relationship also with siblings and neighbours. If this has been an area which has been difficult for you over the last couple of years, it wouldn't be a surprise, because Saturn, the planet of restriction, has been making its way through this sign. And by the end of the month, to be honest, Mercury is going to be spending the last week alongside Saturn. So that could be a time when you may need to choose your words very carefully, but people will know only too well that what you say is exactly what you mean. So it can be a potent time, but with Saturn moving on on the 19th of December into the sign of Capricorn, it can also be an opportunity to be more in contact with the lessons that you've learned over this last couple of years about the value of your ideas and also the power of your voice. But on the seventh day of this month, it's Venus, your ruler, which is on the move, moving into Scorpio and joining up with the Sun. Now, Venus moving into this area can be fantastic for your bank balance. Some kind of improvement is definitely possible from then until the end of the month. And this is even heightened even more because from the 10th through to the 16th, Venus is going to be alongside Jupiter. Newly arrived last month and Jupiter broadly can be very good for you in terms of your sense of self over the next 12 months. But with Venus alongside... If you are someone who has a sweet tooth or enjoys good food or wine, you may find that any uh, self-discipline you have could plummet a little bit as you want to devour the things that are really yummy and desirable. It could even be if you're lucky enough to have someone that you're close to that your love life can be reinvigorated by this connection in a marvellous way. 
Now, right at the heart of this month, Venus is also going to be forging a beautiful link with Neptune. So if you do meet someone new, don't be surprised if it is through some kind of earthy or everyday or practical situation. Yet, if this does happen with the right person, the vibes can be truly magical. By the 10th of this month, we do, though, have a quarter moon. This quarter moon is in the 11th house for you, which is about your long-term plans, it's about your social activities, friendships. But the clash here with the sun in your second house suggests that in the following week, you may encounter someone who has a different view of the world or a different set of values to yours, but it could be someone you already know, but you're just learning more about them, and it could be disappointing what you do learn from this. However, from the 14th through to the 24th, we probably have the most powerful phase of the whole month, because then Mars in your sign is going to be squaring up to Pluto. Now, Pluto has been a very hard taskmaster for you since 2008, because this is the planet of change, but it's the planet of secrets, but it's also the planet of power. And it's been operating in your sector of emotions, home and family. And during that transit, as it has clashed, particularly with Uranus, there probably have been times when your relationships felt anything but stable. This particular clash may be more about someone you're actually quite close to. It could be a family member, it could be a partner, it could be a sibling or an offspring. And some kind of power battle is possible, especially if you feel that people have been taking you for granted. Because you can be so attuned to other people's needs that sometimes people forget that you have needs too. Now Mars is going to be stiffening your resolve this month, making you much more desirous of what's right for you. But that could create some kind of reaction if you're wanting to change the status quo. The new moon, which occurs on the 18th, can on the face of it also be good for your resources, your sense of yourself, but it is clashing with Uranus. So it, it's possible that once more, your values and those of someone you're interacting with may not quite marry up as you'd like. So there could be some work to do here in terms of compromising, talking things through and trying to keep the dialogue flowing. The 22nd is going to help this because the sun moves into Sagittarius. Neptune, which has been tracking backwards for five and a half months, goes forwards. So if there has been a draining amount of of energy issues around you, you've not felt quite as fired up as you would like, I do think that will ease. And this combination is definitely going to put you into a more positive frame of mind in the last 10 days of this month. Mercury then goes on to forge a brilliant link with Uranus. And your ability to think outside the box, be imaginative, but also be very non-judgmental in your relationships. Could see you having some brilliant connections with people. Now Mars and, and Uranus are going to be in opposition in the last three days. This could lead to a bit of a, a, a scrap, an argument, but it also could clear the air. What is more challenging is that com combination between Mercury and Saturn. It can make you a little more stilted in your thinking, but also very precise around what you need to say. But if you do have an important conversation you're going to have at that time, then do choose those words carefully. So this is a month that gives you ample opportunity to enjoy the good things in life, to potentially improve your financial situation, to feel better about yourself, to interact with people. But that interaction, I think, is going to flag up where there are different values to you. And Mars is the key player because it's really making you much more self-possessed. But I actually think that can be a very good thing for you. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for joining me. Good luck and goodbye for now. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple, or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site, or download your free birth chart. There's all your favorite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly horoscopes, 
for general love Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.